So, hello there, folks. This is a simple collection run through uh, for 2020. Um, it, it's going to be a while when I get another game, I think so, at least. Um, throughout the summer, I don't think I'm going to get any more games. And if something comes from Kickstarter, we're going to take a look at my pre orders as well. So, talk about briefly about the Kickstarter. So, this is this is a collection run through. I talk about why I have such and such game in my collection. There are, might be some games that I haven't tried or played yet. Uh, they are in my collection for a reason that I really want to have them. I really <laughs> want to like them. But who knows if I will eventually like them. Also, there's, uh, there's a policy kind of thing going on in my collection that I never want to have more than 50 games in my collection. It might be less, uh, depending on the, on the season, if, if I buy any games, if not. But... Uh, and I and I try to I try to include unplayed games into my overall fifty count of fifty as well, because you know I could have fifty games and then twenty unplayed. There would be seventy, and it's it's not a good case here. So yeah, overly fifty games at most. I don't know how many I have right now. I've uh, I always sell things or buy a few things. I buy rarely and sell more often. So, because, I don't know, some games, I feel like they will not be beneficial to my collection in the long term. There might be some great games that I, I thought were great and I enjoyed them, but it didn't really, uh, didn't really go well with my playgroup or I have no one to play them with or for whatever reason. There's, there are many reasons why there are games that I enjoy very much but will not have in my collection. So... Uh, that's that, and let's just start going through that, and I'm going to talk about uh, each game at collection. Um, I will most likely not show you, or maybe I will show you uh, the the pictures of the games. I don't know. Let me see. There are quite a few, but not that many. Anyway, uh, so first of all, Seventh Continent, it's... 20 on board game gig and then i have the expansion so i got it uh when there was that second kickstarter for that game with that expansion and i haven't played that yet and i know it's crazy but i got it a long time ago but i mean uh, hearing about it taking for like taking five to seven hours uh, for that whole session and i'm not really keen on saving games like for example with time stories as well I always liked to play the series through in one go because otherwise I feel like I'm separated from the story. And here I, I just I'm afraid I'm gonna be separated from the story. And plus this game, they say it's it's great solo or uh, as a two-player game. Let me just click on it for a moment. I'm not gonna show you everything here, but you know, there's this that uh, choose your own adventure going on. Which I usually enjoy in games, stories, and things. I'm, I'm sure I'm gonna love this game when I get around to that. Okay, yeah, it's it's gonna be not that great to. Let me just uh, do some of the things here really quick. I'm sorry about that. Uh, it just easier. Yeah, something like that. I mean, let me add the. Um, let me add the rank as well so we can take a look at that i'm not going to show you the pictures of those games you can see them here you can you can google them you can go to board game geek and look at the pictures yourself it's not that important as of now all right so um let's go to the next game abyss abyss i enjoy it roughly i have all the expansions or both of the expansions uh, there's some kind of a promo that i don't have i don't care about that I do have a new playmat as well, the huge playmat. Uh, you can see the picture on, on our Instagram account. Uh, you can find the uh, all the account information in the description in the video. So take a look there. You can find the Instagram and Twitter accounts. You can find some pictures and plays and things there. That's that. But yeah, I played this recently again and... I don't know, the, the both of the expansions, they really add to the game. The Black Pearls add this kind of a small tension of 
having this extra thing, but in cost of minus points. But if you, I haven't really gone with that strategy yet with the Black Pearl strategy, but if you do it right, and if there's a little bit of luck, more luck that you can get the certain Lords into your collection, then it's a very viable strategy and it can work very well because if you get minus five points, but you get 20 more points out of that, you're still in plus, you know, you're still 50 points plus. So a great game, a great set collection game with a little bit of that trading going on there and so on. So I love Abyss. I think Abyss should be, I mean, let's, let's, let's do that. Let's do that. I'm going to change it to 10 right now because the more I play, the more I enjoy it uh, recently. All right. So uh, then we have Adventure Games, Monochrome Inc., Adventure Games, The Dungeon. I played Monochrome Inc. I, have, I, I didn't rate it because I played only, there's like um, three parts in each of these. And these Adventure Games, let me just show you for a moment. Uh, these Adventure Games are, yeah, like such choose your own adventure games where you go into those different, um, I don't know, with the rooms and things, and then you have the different numbers, and they correspond to your skills and things. So you go there, you try to solve some little puzzles and interact with the world in this, like, escape room, choose an adventure type game in here. It's nice, it's cool. We played only the first part of the three-part scenario in the first one in the uh, Monochrome Inc. We haven't played since. So I really want to get back to that. It wasn't something amazing, but it was... Oh, now I have to do the columns again. It was something amazing, but it was really, really cool to go through that and see what else can be done in, in a way of like escape rooms and things. So that's that. Okay, then we have Alchemists and 7.5 here. Um, Alchemists is a really, really cool game using the app, trying to combine the elements. I really like that. And we got rid of uh, Alchemists a long time ago. Now, as I have a, uh, as I have a, a girlfriend right now, uh, a new girlfriend, so which she, she was like, we were in the board game shop and she was like, oh, um, this one looks cool. What's this about? And then I talked to her, like, you have to, you know, use the app in order to, to you know, uh, combine the elements and try to understand what are the elements, uh, uh, what, what, they, what they belong to and so on, deduct things and try to combine things and do the potions and... And it's like a Euro game, I told her, because she, she already played like Underworld the Cities and something like that. It's something like that, that you manage your resources, you go to different spots in order to gain benefits and things. So, and she's like, oh, that sounds really, really cool. And the theme, I like that. And you can uh, use the app and combine the elements. So that's why we got this one. And I got this back and we're going to play it someday again. So we'll see about that. Anachrony. Anachrony, a uh, great game. I got it from Kickstarter. Uh, Anachrony is is my go-to heavy Euro game uh, in this regard because it manages to do very much like a kitchen sink thing in a very logical manner, you know, because it's a worker placement game and it's quite, you know, it's a quite linear worker placement game. Go there, do that. But it has the cool element of, of like the Manhattan Project as well, where you have your own board where you can place your uh, workers. And first of all, workers are different and there aren't like, ex ex you know, extensively different like in some other games, but they're still different than some spots require a certain worker or a genius and so on. And the other cool part is that you have a central board, but you need mechs or whatever they are, the exosuits. So you can put the workers on ex in, in the exosuits so you can use those spots in the central board, but you can use your workers in, in your own board, but then you have to build the buildings into your own board so you can use those buildings with the workers and so on. And you have this uh, time travel going on there a little bit. It's, it's, it's a little bit on an abstract side here, but you, you can use the resources uh, and you can get some extra resources, but you have to bring them back into the past. And there's a little bit of that time, time travel going on and those super projects that you build that give you really cool abilities and the, the whole boost there's there's a lot you can do 
but it's all it, it all fits you know it all like those gears going on you know and it's not extremely complicated once you start playing there's a lot of rules but it's not complicated of course execute commander pack and doomsday they have okay so anachrony great then we have black angel black angel is uh, they they say tua and solania kind of a mixture and i just um i haven't played this one so i got it recently i just like the theme very much i just i just uh, adore this theme of you know you are on a spaceship so in search of a new earth and then the the interesting part is that the ship is managed by robots because uh everything everyone else is in a cryo sleep or something like that as, as i understand but yeah i don't know it's just like spaceship as a small country launching and going to to the new earth to the new life it's just a cool idea itself and there were cool mechanics that i understood they were and i just i'm very excited to play black angel i hope it's great then we have boo box and bus um boo box and bus and there will be more of these so these are the pack of games these tiny games in the pack of gum you know things they have certain amount of cards small cards but they are really clever i mean they are go-to games so you, you you can bring this pouch of those games like how many games do fit in there like nine or ten games fit in one pouch small pouch and and they have very many different mechanics pick up and delivery the mancala mechanic then we have the set collections then we have some puzzly things going on there cooperative word games lots of them you know very many cool parts push your luck so so this is like it shows you those many different cool board game mechanism mechanisms in these tiny little uh, games and the new set the Paco games 2 has a better artwork than the Paco games 1 i don't know if, if you look at that it's it's a tiny box but it it takes some space here and usually they are yeah like tiling as well and so on i haven't played boo uh yet but yeah i mean there there's just a ton of things going on there i'm sorry i have allergy uh so Boo box i played i think i played box but i haven't wait i've played box oh that was with the dots that was really clever like it's it's kind of like an area control you try to have your pattern being bigger and then you score for that and it's very clever very engaging oh i like that not not extremely much but me like it was really cool and bus uh that one, I think I need to play it again. This was a pick up and delivery game where uh, you have to, yeah, you have to move your bus, you pick up the passengers and move them somewhere else. A very small game. These are all small games. This bus was in the first edition of, uh, oops, I, I didn't show you. But anyway, bus was in the first edition of Paco Games. Okay. All right, then we have C3K, Crossroad, Crossover, Cyclades, Kemet. So I have those extra cards in Cyclades uh, copy. Captive is a choose your own adventure book. Adventure book. You go through that like a comic style book. You choose the path you go through, the different numbers and things. Really cool idea. I have the whole set of these. You're going to see them later. Cartographer's Role Player Tale. Uh, this is a uh, roll and write game or flip and write game I, I i always named them roll and write and this one sounded really cool because it was like oh it's it's one of the most popular roll and write games right now and i have my go-to roll and write right now and i've played several of them but only have one in my collection i had one in my collection so far so i was like i need to have another one something a little bit different so i have you, you, i can like choose one or the other and not get tired of just one thing so cartographers role play tale haven't played that one yet um chronicles of crime we just played recently again we played the uh, i played one of the series of noir i haven't tried noir before i played mostly the the base game i played one of the scenario of red view as well I, and i've played now i've played one series of noir and i i really like like this this scenario of noir that we chose was really cool 
the story was great. I mean, this this game creates stories because it's yeah, it's a app during game when you scan those different codes. And um, let me just show you. Maybe, maybe maybe let's do like that. So if I want to show you, I'm going to show you. Okay. And then maybe yeah, the filters were going to go off. So in this game, you scan those QR codes and you go to this different location, ask people about other people about some evidence that you found. You have this 3D scene that you can look through in your phone. You can use the 3D uh, glasses here as well for that. It's very interactive. Uh, the stories are very engaging. I really like all of that here. It just, I don't know, it just, when you start playing that, you are in this game and your brain melts sometimes about like, wow, all those connections. So she left him and he could have killed her, but then he said he has the alibi and he's there. But then there's a third person we don't know about and wait, did she even go here and did, oh, maybe the policeman is corrupted. So maybe he's lying about the evidence and, you know, all sorts of thing going on here, like a real CSI thing going on here and really cool stories. I like Chronicles of Crime and I liked all, like I haven't played all of these scenarios, but I really liked, let me just, I think I can do at least this one so you can see the, yeah. So I really like all of these scenarios but um, I played only one scenario of each, uh, the uh, Noir and Red View. So, so great. Clank Legacy, we're in a Clank Legacy campaign. And Clank Legacy is a great, great, great game. I'm not going to show you pictures. You, you look at the pictures yourself because there's just too much information here right now. It becomes too small. Okay. Now, now it's better. So I'm sorry about that. Anyway, Clank Legacy, it's like Clank, but with legacy elements. Tech building game, uh, you always discover something, you go through the board, you try to collect those artifacts and score the most points. In this one, I don't feel that much competitive. I play with, with my girlfriends. She becomes really competitive and she, and she really likes to, you know, get most points and things. But we also, very much enjoy to discover the board, discover all of those uh, choose your adventure elements in here. And this is more fun than just winning the game. So, uh, Cyclades, I um, uh, love this game, as you know, area control game where we have hero elements of bidding on gods. They give you different abilities. It's extremely great, um, I don't know, hybrid game. And I need to, I need to, to try Titans again. I didn't like Titans that much because I played Cyclades with Hades and, and now with Monuments as well. So I played, I played this with the two, the small expansion, the bigger one with the modules. And I didn't like Titans that much, but I have everything with Cyclades. So maybe I should try Titans again. Maybe I'll like it more this time. Uh, but yeah, I do love Cyclades and the archipelagos and how you, how you, approach this kind of a it, it, it creates the feel of like it's it's not head-to-head -head combat you know you go into that and you start fighting it's more of the anticipation of a fight and then eventually something happens but if something happens it bursts into something else you know i like that and freak mythology great then we have d-day die second edition uh d-day die second edition is i played the first edition long long time ago and i saw the new edition kickstarter was like uh, I, I sold this game long ago. I was like, uh, maybe I should get this game back because I really like the idea of the of the dice and going through this World War II front with those upgrading those dice and and uh, rolling those dice and like like the dice rolling mechanism can go on here as well and the theme and everything and probably the second edition is better than the first edition. Maybe I should get this kind of a cooperative game back into my collection. So that's why I got it. I haven't played the new edition, so I don't know if it's great or not. I played the initial the dice a long time ago. Dice Stars. This is my go-to roll and write game right now because it's extremely simple. You fill columns or rows and then you have colors and numbers uh, on the dice. You draft them from the center. You grab some from the bag and 
you know, it's very engaging, really cool, very fast. I just like it. And you add this many, many tiny expansion of planets, you get some special bit as well. Dig. I played Dig. Um, I was that was okay. Let me just put this here. I mean, Dig is another Paco Games game from the second uh, series of Paco Games. And in this one, you have to collect bones, but you, you go with your dog and or a bowl or something like that. I don't even remember that much. I mean, I played only once. I have to play it again. And the, the thing is, oh, yeah, I remember. The thing is that half of the game we played it wrong because my girlfriend took it to play with her family and then they they uh, she read the rules a little bit wrong and they played a little bit wrong and then I read the rules again. It was like, oh, you have to play differently because for me it sounds weird, you know. She's not a gamer. I'm a gamer, so I, I kind of feel like, oh, something's weird here. But the other half of the game we played right, and it was it was really nice collecting bones and things, and and the movement, uh, movement thing going on there it was really cool. Empires of the Void two, um, this is my forex game uh, from Ryan Lockett. I like his style of games because he has kind of a that midweight Euros type going on there with great art, a little bit of story as well. In this one, I really like how you upgrade your stuff on your board, but something becomes more expensive. You discover those planets. You can go politically or you can go warfare. You can hire uh, you can hire some troops from other planets, not, not your troops. And I don't know, just really cool Forex game. I have to play it again, though. Empire's Age of Discovery, great game. Every control, worker placement, where workers are really different. Merchant gives you money. Captain is for discovery. Uh, builder builds buildings better, you know, and so on. So I really, really like it. it. It's not that hard to learn, and it's very engaging. I love Empire's Age of Discovery, and I have a ton of stuff for that as well. Uh, Escape Room Games, the game uh, two. I played two of the of the three scenarios. I've cooled down on these, or maybe these these weren't that cool then like the first box of three of those plus the two expansions was really cool of escape room you you have this device as well this uh, plastic device that counts things and you know you you put the you put the plastic keys into you can go look into the in the pictures uh you put the plastic keys into that and then they it says yes or nay you know like sound like sounds -da -da. oh yes i did i put the keys right no right order right way and then do then it's wrong you know and 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 it's very puzzly it's it is escape room it's it's a cinematic escape room in my opinion but the first edition of that the first three were the best in my opinion uh, these new ones are lacking something i don't know this engagement or something exit the game the catacombs of horror it was really nice exit the game it's two parts so i played only one part i haven't played the second part it was nice. There were those elements, but I mean, I'm getting tired of exit and and unlock. I'm I'm not getting that tired of unlock because unlock gives you this picturesque escape room feeling, more cinematic escape room feeling. Exit the game tries to do something more story wise, but it fails because it, it has it has cool puzzles. True, it has cool puzzles. But there's nothing else behind those puzzles. It, they are just dry, uh, puzzly puzzles, you know. While Unlock gives you pictures, hidden numbers. It gives you app. And with the app, you can do a ton of cool, innovative things, innovative puzzles as well. So Unlock is a superior puzzle game for me, escape room game, because it has more picturesque and cinematic universe kind of so first class all aboard the orient express uh one of my go-to uh, engine building games i do love that because you you build up your kind of a train uh, and then you have 
a variety of different modules that you can mix and match. So each game will be a little bit different. And I like the drafting from the center where you draft the different actions that you can do. Sometimes you want to get only money. Sometimes you want to uh, get the new uh, train wagons. Sometimes you want to get the other track of the train. And it's just so engaging. It's easy to learn. And it's a point solid game that I enjoy. And I have those all those extra things as well. So I have everything for that. The Flow of History is my go-to civilization game. It's a card-based civilization game with this bidding aspect going on there and how I like that there are different categories of cards. And in each category of card, you can only have one card. If if like if you have if I have this kind of a red card, red category, but remember like war category, and then I get another war category card, I have to put the new one on top of the old one. The symbols, the there are there are some extra symbols on the bottom of the card. They still count, but the ability of that previous card is now replaced with a new ability. I really like that. I really like that you will not have a a spreadsheet of thousands of abilities you need to manage. You always have like, I don't know, five or six categories. And then in each category, you only have one ability. But when do I switch to a new ability in that category or not? Really cool aspect. I like that. And this is the deluxe edition. Uh, the new world has cooler artwork in it as well. Oh, quality based. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I didn't see you because I'm not looking at the I'm not looking at the comments. So hello, hello there. Uh, so yeah, I'm I'm streaming a little bit about my collection. It's a simple video, so you might not be bothered by that. <laughs> anyway, uh, fly. Uh, it's another back of game game. Uh, th this one was extremely simple. You just drop the cards onto the cards on the table, trying to uh, trying to beat the the flies trying to catch the flies and i don't know it was meh yeah garden dice uh this is a game where you are planting uh, those different uh plants uh, like tomatoes and paprika and whatever else carrot things and then you have to water them and there's the water chaining mechanic as well going on there but there are also critters who eat your vegetables or or uh yeah the crop and things and so and you are playing based on the dice that you roll because the, there's a grid, you know, you roll the dice and that's where you can place the different vegetables as well. I played a long time ago. I'm sorry about that. I don't remember the game exactly. But I got this game back and because, because I felt like I need to have this kind of a cool garden family game with dice. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Gem, uh, that was a really cool one as well, uh, 6.7. Maybe I should have rated it better, but I played it a very long time ago. I don't remember about this game, but this is uh, one of the first Paco games. So that's that. Then we have oh, Glenda Wars Empire's interesting Plague promo. Never played with Plague promo. I don't like Plague promo. So here we have the Green Masquerade. Uh, the Green Masquerade is a uh, really cool uh, deduction game where you have, um, it's, it's in, a, in a green uh stories world and then you have the different characters like a uh, wolf and evil queen and cinderella and well rumpelstinskin and so on so and each one of you will get a character hidden a character so you know who you are nobody else knows who you are and then you're gonna draft those different artifact cards and what you want to do you want to collect three of your desired artifact cards but there are also two of the artifact uh, sorry there's um one category of the artifact that you don't like. So, for example, Wolf likes... Uh, I don't remember what he likes. It, he, uh, uh, Wolf likes to collect the disguise uh, artifacts. But uh, Wolf hates the, uh, the cauldron. So if you collect two cauldron cards, you have to reveal yourself, you're out of the round. If you collect three of uh, the disguise, you win as a wolf. So nobody knows who everybody is. And then you're trying to unmask each other, trying to collect the roses. It's very simple. There are a few really small modules that add to the variability. Like if you are set back, if you have least amount of points at the end of the round, for the next round, you will get a special ability, which is really cool. Kind of a catch-up mechanic. I really like that. And then you have uh, a small bidding mechanism in there, like or wager mechanism, where you 
if if you are out of the round, you can still win if you place your bid. So you, I mean, you do it secretly on a player who might or on a character who might win. And if the character wins, you win as well. Another catch mechanic and things. So you can do some, there are some also special actions like pointing the finger or changing the cards or looking at the unused character cards so you can mitigate things. Really, really cool. I like that. Uh, Jim, another cool um, Paco Games game that we uh, previewed as, as we had the prototype copies of that. Really, really cool. I like I liked it um, quite much. It's a two-player game. I don't know if you can play even more, I remember. But basically, yeah, you have to pick up a team and then you have to be better with your team than the other team. Um, yeah, I don't remember very much about that one, but that was really cool. Small pack of game. Okay, then we have uh, then we have Homesteaders, and Homesteaders is and that that's my go-to engine building game where it's it's an ugly game in my opinion, but I really like the bidding mechanism in it where you bid for uh, g having the opportunity to build those different buildings, certain buildings, and then you build those buildings, they give you more worker spots or they give you income or uh, they give you opportunities to trade and exchange things more and better. And eventually you're trying to build yourself up so you can get the most points. Great thing. Uh, the Homesteaders New Beginnings is the cool expansion that adds the variability with the small event cards that add to that as well and some few extra buildings. Then we have Hue. Uh, this is like Box. And Hue is also like an abstract uh, game where you're trying to have more of your own color on the board. A bigger like uh, print, footprint of your color. Then we have Ice Cool 2. I played the Ice Cool, the basic one, and Ice Cool 2. Let me just give it a rating as well. I played it. So, wait, what? Okay. So, yeah, I played with my uh, girlfriend. I needed to have a game that has, I needed to have some kind of a dexterity game here. And Ice Cool is a very simple one that you can blast out uh, during a party night and then flick some penguins, you know? Really cool game. Insider, my go to party game. Uh, in this one, you have to guess the words, but you have also hidden roles. And one of you is the insider who also knows the words, but nobody else knows about the insider. And there is a master who knows the word, and he's like, he, he's the one who answers the questions. Everybody else needs to ask the questions, and the insider needs to secretly kind of uh, show everybody the path without being noticed that he's an insider to that certain word. When you guess it, then you have to vote who you think is insider. If if you catch the insider, you win, insider loses. If you won't catch the insider, insider wins alone. So it's kind of a cooperative game, but in a manner of having like a, a goodwill traitor, you know? And yeah, I really like guessing the word uh, with the answers being yes or no only and so on. So Judge Dread, the Cursed Earth. This is the uh, re-implementation of the last expedition with some extra mechanics. I haven't tried this one yet. But I do really like uh, The Last Expedition. That's why I got this game as well. Lie. I haven't played Lie yet. I, it sounded like a little bit like Liar's Dice or something like that. Similar to that. But in it's a small Paco game game here. Living Planet. Uh, in, in this one, this is a spiritual successor to Archipelago, in my opinion. But this is not Archipelago. But I mean, like there are there are a few similarities, and if 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 the Zen himself says that this is not archipelago, yeah, this this isn't. But there are still some similarities, like exploration, like building buildings, staying on them, and so on. But in this one, this is more brutal. So you have to you have to agree on the part that you won't save all your buildings. Some of the buildings will be destroyed by the cataclysm because the planet is hostile the planet will kill you but you need to get the most out of those buildings and the resources and it has the stock market thing going on there because the most points that you get you get from the money you get the money how you build the factories you get the resources you sell them for a great price you get the money you win the game and there are also those different expansions as well that you, you can spice up the game with i played aquarius so far uh, that, that was really harsh expansion because you uh, you started the water but it's not like archipelago where you can just spread out, build up, 
archipelago feels more traditional, more smooth. In this one, it's harsh from the beginning. You need to explore, you need to build, but Cataclysm always, uh, always, always um, go after you. And I really like the idea of having those different cores at the beginning where you choose the side of your die. And that's uh, how strong your actions will be uh, during uh, your turn. But they also can activate Cataclysm. So I, I really like Living Planet. Some people hate it. And it seems like it, it hasn't had a lot of uh, good reviews. But I think this is a great game, not just for everyone. The Last Expedition. Uh, Last Expedition is uh, kind of my, almost my go-to cooperative game because it's extremely simple to teach. You want to go through the jungle. You have those different cores that have uh, icons in them. You, have, you need to resolve the icons. So it's like a small puzzle when to play a certain card because you need to play those cards into the path and then you follow that path. You, you have to resolve each card in a path. And that's where the puzzle comes in. That's where the cooperation comes in. You, you, you cannot show your hand to anybody else. So you're just trying to survive. I really like it. I, and I didn't like the art at first, but then I realized that this art is really cool. <laughs> that's that. And the expansion adds some modules that add to the game overly. And that was really, really cool. I like that. Then we have Luke Garrow. Uh, this is another book about the werewolf, uh, the Choose Adventure book. Then we have Museum. I really like Museum, and I like it more with the archaeologists. I haven't played the World's Fair yet because it adds extra scoring, so I'm going to play it later. But the archaeologists add the strategic moment to the whole set collection aspect of Museum. Museum is a very beautiful game, but um, Museum is, yeah, it's all about just set collection. You're trying to get the artifacts into your museum and then arrange them in the way that you score for different collections. So you also have some hidden scorings and as, as well. The archaeologists, um, they add the aspect that in order to bring the um, artifact from a certain location, you need to have, have uh, you need to have archaeologists there. So that's where you start to pay for uh, you has to you start to pay for the archaeologists so you can get them out on the board also those archaeologists they give you bonus actions as well if you go further with them they give you bonus actions if you if you like if you have a certain amount of archaeologists like you have two archaeologists on the um, Pacific Ocean uh, uh, territory where you can grab the cards from you also get some bonuses already and then at the end you also get some extra points that you can score it's also a kind of a, like a strategy there. It adds this kind of a strategic moment of it's not like it becomes that you cannot grab cards from anywhere and just do your own collection and be yourself. Now it becomes even more competitive because you can also you can also you know the thing is that you can also use other archaeologists in order to grab the cards from that certain uh location where you don't have archaeologists but somebody else has but you have to pay them as the strategy even more i like that a lot uh that's that that's a really cool game and not meaty at all um never and far uh, we started with the campaign now uh played before uh i mean the the initial scenario of that is not that good but if you go through the campaign so going through the campaign my girlfriend didn't like that game but she was like Okay, I'm gonna give it this game a, a, another chance because it sounds really cool, looks really cool. Let's do that. And this is a vertical placement game with the adventure aspect and choose your adventure. Like uh, you go to different spots, so you read from the book, and then you have choices. And uh, this uh, campaign adds the thing that some choices will influence your further choices and so on. That's really cool. I like Amber Mines expansion. That's a great addition. It makes some broker spots more relevant. The initial mines in near and far aren't as good, but with the amber mines, you have the whole separate exploration going on there, separate strategy. You can go and explore those mines further and further. It gives you the, the feel of exploring the mines. Uh, so I really like that. Uh, with amber mines, near and far is great. Without amber mines, near and far is, is good. It's, it's fine. But Amber Mines makes it much better, in my opinion. 
then we have Nemesis uh, and why the rating is 9, it's already 10. Because I love Nemesis, it's my number 2 uh, game of all time. I do love Nemesis because it is Aliens the board game. You are on a ship. You have those. You are like like we played the two play game Nemesis yesterday, and I like to. This is a semi co op game where everybody you're you're playing cooperatively, but you have your hidden goals, and sometimes your personal goal can contradict the other person's personal goal, or it, your personal goal might say that uh, you the um, in this campaign the player number that needs to die. That player needs to die in order for you to win the game. But it's still really hard that you have to survive as well. You have to get to the escape pods or or navigate uh, the ship. You are on the ship. You are exploring the ship, exploring those different rooms, and they give you cool abilities. But the aliens come at you all the time. You have to fight them off and analyze the uh, the alien eggs and things and kill the aliens and uh, trying to survive, trying to navigate and trying to repair the ship and put the fire out and this game creates stories. It's Aliens, the board game on a ship that is that is crashing and, you know, just love it. And then we have, I don't know why I have two entries of the same. I will look into that. But I have Nemesis. I haven't played, the, I haven't played with the Void Seeders. This is the other type of aliens that you can play with. I played, Aftermath adds the, some new rooms, like turrets rooms, and uh, it also adds and it adds those turrets and also adds extra characters and more characters is always better and there's also medic now <sighs> somebody can heal us because it's really easy to get wounded or contaminated or whatever then we have nuts uh, nut is a uh, paco games game i haven't tried it this is from the new newer pack of paco games games and yeah why not i'm gonna try it at some point Obscurio, this is my Mysterium now. Um, I I adore Mysterium. The problem with Mysterium that I had, and uh, like some, some other folks that I play with had, is that Mysterium is slow in a way that sometimes you are stuck with the cars that you don't know what to do with as a ghost. And then you take time to kind of figure out how to and what cars to give to players Obscurio is a time-based, it's a real-time thing going on there. You have a certain time and there are some traps and rules that, that you know, kind of uh, twist the gameplay. One of you is a traitor. The traitor here is on a light side because the traitor needs you to not escape. The traitor needs you to choose uh, some other card except yours. But it's also here like that, that there's the, uh, like a game master like a ghost, basically uh, trying to hint on a right door. And then you have those rounded cards, which are also like pictures, like Dixit and Mysterium pictures. And then you put them out, and then everybody needs to go to the door. And if you guess wrong, uh, some things will be deducted uh, from your pile. So if, if you choose wrong, then you can uh, harm the team. But if at least one of you chooses right, then you go to the next door. So that's that. And the traitor needs to secretly manipulate uh, that way that uh, you choose the wrong doors. And it's all in real time, the traps and things. It just it just needs more expansions right now. But I think it's... it's um, Mysterium might be better right now because of the expansions. But as long as they start giving more expansions to Obscuria, I think Obscuria will eventually uh, overgrow Mysterium. Yeah, that's that. Uh, Orc uh, is a two-player game, uh, like a, um, how do you call it? Um, so basically, each one of you has a side, and then you need to play the cards on each side and then compare numbers and things. It's from Paco Games, a tiny game. That was okay. Uh, Prodigal's Club. Uh, I showed it to my girlfriend. And she was, I, I told her that, oh, there's such a game that has this and this theme that you need to lose votes and then you need to lose money and things and you need to become a loser, basically. And she was like, oh, that, um, that sounds really cool. I really want to try that game. That's why we got this game. So, but I haven't played it yet. Red 7, my kind of a go-to filler game 
because it's extremely simple but very finky. And I have certain people who have played this with, that we played with uh, many, many times, and they love this game. They only want to play this game with me. It's, it's based on colors, numbers, and rules on those colors, basically. And you play those cards down into your palet, uh, palette, and then you play uh, them in the center to change the rules. Very simple, very engaging. Uh, you can play it in various ways. I just love this filler. Rising Sun, I need to play Rising Sun again, but it was an epic experience. It's, it is a Blood Rage successor in a way that uh, I also have the big play mat as well. You, you also have uh, your, you have your own clan with your special ability, but you start uh, getting more cards, which will kind of uh, make yourself even more asymmetric from the other players. Then you get those big monsters that help you in the combat, and the combat mechanism is really cool. Before combat, you do this small kind of a political phase as well, where you beat coins on different aspects, and whoever beats the most on, on a certain aspect will get that bonus. So even if you are on a losing side for a moment, like, oh, you have more troops than me, but if I win this kind of a political side of this game, a mini game, then you might be a loser at the end. So I really like that. Rising Sun, great game. Uh, Rum is another pack of games game. Um, remember much about that one. Seems like it was okay. <coughs> Sorry. Then we have Sanctum. Um, I got Sanctum because uh, they said that this is like Diablo the board game and I just need to try what is Diablo the board game. And it sounded cool. Then Scythe, uh, the definitive of a hybrid game. Scythe is great. Really great with, uh, with the uh, newest expansion, Rise of Fenris. We played through the campaign and now I use the modules. I have... I have all the different extra things for Scythe, as you can see, and plus the metal coins and things and resources and stuff. And it just, Rise of Fenris adds so much to the game with those extra modules of, of, of mech, mech, mech modes and infrastructure modes and some other things going on there that it makes the game very much replayable. It makes the game very engaging each time you play it two extra factions as well so now you have nine factions to choose from i just love scythe it's great uh sherlock Holmes for investigations that's another book choose an adventure book then shh, it's the um i think it's the uh, the cooperative uh, game of paco game series i don't I haven't played that one in zero west i haven't played that one i read the rules sounded really cool has different modules i haven't played it one that one yet so is the mancala style paco games game um a small small this small package of games and i like that i remember i like that but i played it a very long time ago so speechless i do have it from the dice of a cruise I'm, i haven't played it yet but maybe i should get it out at some point and try it with uh, some party groups spy another pack of games game that i haven't tried yet uh it's from the newer set of them stockpile love stockpile with continuing corruption, especially, I, I, I really want to get the newest expansion. The uh, illicit investment, I think, which adds those different action cards as well. Uh, Stockpile is a great game. I didn't want to buy Stockpile when I sold that. It, was, it sounds really boring, but I really love Stockpile. The manipulation of the stock market and getting those different uh, cards, uh, uh, what, what they are, um, stocks, they get them different stocks and trying to get the most money. And when somebody reveals information, you, you pushed your luck, you didn't sell those stocks, and then somebody reveals information that this go, goes bankrupt. It adds a lot of love, uh, laugh, and uh, it's, it's just so, so party-ish of a game. It depends on the group, but everybody I play with, they really enjoyed Stockpile. Uh, then we have Touch. I think I played Touch. Uh, this is from Paco Games. Uh, I don't remember about that. Okay. Tapestry, uh, civilization game. I do have it in my collection still because I really wanted to like this one. I have some problems with Tapestry. Uh, some some really swingy problems, you know, the, the, the powers, uh, the draw of the cards. Sometimes you get 
to the end of a track, which means for me at least, I tried my best to get to the end of the track and then I get nothing. That's uh, really, that's really, really frustrating in my opinion. And that's where I was like, oh, I played Tapestry two times, both times were frustrating. But I enjoyed, I enjoyed like, I enjoyed 70% of the game. But 30% of the game was abysmal. And that where it tears down the, the Tapestry for me. But I still have it because my girlfriend loves this game to the bits. It's her favorite game. She would never, uh, she would never allow me to sell this game. And I think maybe at some point I will come back to Tapestry with a different mindset and maybe I'll enjoy it more. I don't know. Maybe the expansion will, will uh, add something to it. So we'll see. Uh, Tears of Goddess. Uh, so this is the uh, Choose Your Own Adventure book. Another one that I haven't played through yet. Time Stories Revolution Experience and Hadel Project. Hadel Project is the uh, the first scenario of Time Stories Revolution series. An experience add those between things that adds to the story of all of the scenarios that will come up. Haven't tried this one yet, but I do love Time Stories. Despite all of the criticism Time Stories got in recent years, I still enjoy it to the bits. TKO, uh, I didn't like that that much. That was one of the small Peko games where you are boxing and things, whatever. Don't care. But I still have it in my collection because I still, I just have the, these are so tiny games that I don't care. So then we have Top Home. And uh, Top Home is a, an area control game in a way. This is walls in a world war. And uh, with those um, moles, uh, you have to create the line of sight between two of your moles. And the greater it is, the, the, the bigger the distance is between, between two moles, the more points you score. But then you have to change position of them in order for you to score again. Yeah, you, you cannot just leave it how they are. And there are several cards which are like modules. And you can mix and match several decks. And you can do very different games each day, each time. You can go very peaceful game. You can go balanced game, because strategic game, more tactical game. You can go more warfareish game uh, with, with 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 this one. And those little cards actions really add to the game. It's a very engaging, easy to learn, just a great great game in my opinion. With the expansion, it adds more. Uh, it adds more uh, of the different decks. Then we have Trintopia. Um, I played Trintopia. I haven't read it yet, so I need to play it more. This is for a review. This reminded me of Carcassonne, but I enjoyed it more than Carcassonne in a way. But I think this one needs an expansion or two to to you know surpass Carcassonne for me fully. But the thing is that in this one you are building your rail roads, uh, so you can score points in different man manners. And then you have those different people that are like passengers. You score for them based on the colors as well. Then you grab, you, you draft tiles and all of those passengers and things from the center of the board. And sometimes you have a choice of, so do I grab this one? But then the other person will get that one instead. So maybe I should grab this one so they will not get it. But then it's like, in this one, hate drafting doesn't work too much because if I grab something, that won't benefit me and will do harm to another player. What's the point? It's just hate drafting. So that's that. Traintopia, a really nice kind of a Carcassonne like game. Uh, Underwater Cities, I do love Underwater Cities. It's a, a, a perfect engine building game where you build your Underwater City with uh, the, the different um, buildings surrounding it that give you resources, and then you have the cards. The central of the board has those different locations where you get the main actions, but the cards give you boosts and uh, permanent abilities and action abilities and one-time uses of things or extra resources. So you're building your tableau of cards and then you have this kind of a worker placement. And then all of this is like an engine building game. I do really love Underworld Cities. I got the newest expansion. I haven't tried the newest expansion, but I'm sure it's going to be great. Valley of the Kings Premium Edition. So I got Valley of the Kings 
again back into my collection. I had the small editions of it. I sold them eventually, but um, this premium edition has bigger cards. It's it's like a traditional deck builder. You play it in a traditional way, but I like how there is a pyramid of cards in the center where you buy cards from. You can buy from the base of the pyramid only. I like the actions on the cards. Uh, there's like actions you buy cards from center, and that's that's the thing. But uh, the coolest part, that's where Dominion sucks. I'm sorry, Dominion is not a great deck building game. And you can say whatever you want. Yeah, it has a ton of expansions, and it's probably better with those ton of expansions. I don't want to buy a ton of expansions. I want to buy one game and already enjoy it roughly. And I, I feel like I don't really like usual deck builders where I just grab all those cards at the end of the game I look at my deck and score those points I don't like that I like some twists going on there and Valley of the Kings add the twist of scoring the cards only that you have entombed which is a separate action you put your cards into different collection there's a set collection going on there as well you need to collect different sets of things uh different artifacts like weapons and treasuries and whatever the uh sarcophags whatever they are and you have to you have to collect them in order to score more and more points. But if you put them into the tomb, you will not be able to use them in your deck anymore. So that's where you have to decide when are you going to put the card away in order for it to score, but then not benefit you throughout the game. Really cool. Uh, I like that. Vindication. I played only once uh, long ago. I enjoyed the game, and I, now I got this game. I cannot really comment on that game. I don't remember it that well. I need to play it again. The first time we played it was a little bit weird, uh, kind of abstract. But in this game, yeah, you go through different spots. You discover those different locations on the board. And uh, then you are uh, trying to manipulate your own kind of a pool of different tokens. You need to put the token from, from the left side to the center, and then from the center to right i don't remember exactly i need to play it again anyway i got this into my collection because i i remember i enjoyed it wingspan um great uh, engine building game that uh, my girlfriend really likes and then european expansion i haven't tried the european, ex european expansion but i really like european expansion uh, uh, sorry i really like wingspan as it is already european expansion adds more variability but in this one, yeah, I, I like to collect those different birds, put them in the different locations, and try, and try to create a small chain reaction. So it's 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 on a lighter weight of gameplay, but I just enjoy it. It's 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 an enjoyable, cool looking game. And then your town is a, a choose your own adventure book. I haven't tried this one. Seems to be the most Sp sprawling one, engaging one, where you uh, have this whole spreadsheet in the book where you can mark things and you live in a town and you build buildings and things and this one becomes like a board game in a book. So that's that. And this is the whole collection. And just briefly, what are my pre-orders here that will come? Oh, Gods of Egypt. That's the third installment in the kind of a Blood Rage Rising Sun series about the Egypt, also huge monsters. And I don't know exactly how it plays, I just want to get it, because Egypt, love it. Uh, Chronicles of Crime, 14,000, 19,000, 24, uh, 1,400, 1,900, 2,400. So different timelines, sounds really cool. This one is more like industrial, uh, already like, like this. If you remember the um, video game Mafia, that type of thing going on there maybe. Then we have Chronicles of Crime, uh, 1400, which is like medieval Chronicles of Crime. I'm, I'm, I really want to try this one. This is futuristic Chronicles of Crime, which is also cool. I really want to like to get those. Mini Express is, by the way, the Mini Express is Mini Rails successor, a bigger train game. I, was, I thought I need, I really need to get this train game, but, but because my idea is game design. I do have, I, I, I enjoyed all of their games, but I don't have all of their games anymore uh, flow of history was more ideas game design game eventually and then tmg republished it as a deluxe version uh but more ideas game design make really smart game really this is a, a taiwanese board game publisher they make really smart games and mini express seems to be like kind of a light stock market game very easy to learn 
but very engaging as well. And about trains, why not? I should have at least one train game in my collection. Steampunk Rally Fusion. I really like Steampunk Rally. I got rid of it eventually a long time ago, but I thought like I should get it back because I need to have a race game in my collection. Plus, I got I thought like maybe I should then get a new version, which is Steampunk Rally Fusion. Title Blades, Heroes of the Reef. Uh, this one will be out by the end of this year. It's yeah, it ha has had huge delays. But this company made the Grim uh, Forest, which I really enjoyed, the Grim Masquerade, which I enjoy very much. Title Blades seem to be a really cool, thematic, cool-looking euro with dice that you can upgrade your dice and things. I don't know, it just sounds cool. And Tiny Epic Dinosaurs, I backed accidentally. I, I was like, I wanted to get reminded, like, I don't know, I, I backed it at first, but I wasn't sure that if I will, that if I should get it or not, because Tiny Epic series was uh, kind of hit or miss for me. And I like Tiny Epic Galaxies, but I wasn't sure about, like, sometimes I want to get board game in a bigger box. And that's when I get this kind of a small box or, or a bigger game crammed in that small box, it sometimes feels uh, not right. But, I mean, Tiny Epic Dinosaurs, uh, sounds cool. I, I got it accidentally. I backed it accidentally, but uh, why not? The dinosaur game. So that's that. That's that's my collection and one of my future games from my collection. So uh, thank you for watching. Well, you will probably watch it uh, later, not doing the live stream. And we see you another time in another video. Maybe we'll do a beautiful cast soon again. So bye bye. See you there.